welcome to this week's Tuesday Talk. This week's Tuesday Talk is going to be in regards to the Book of Ruth. And the Book of Ruth is a theme of the Festival of Shavuot, of Pentecost, which we just celebrated a week ago. I can't believe that it's already been a week since we reached that 50th day, the seven weeks plus one day. We got that completion and that new beginning now. And it's just beautiful just to continue to glean in the, in the beautiful fruit of Pentecost and Shavuot. Amen. The book of Ruth is the eighth book of the Bible. And you know about eight, it means new beginnings. Hallelujah. And God gave Ruth and Naomi a new beginning in the midst of what looked to be a dark situation and what looked to be trouble and turmoil and pain and suffering. He turned that around. He turned their sorrow into joy. Amen. And that's exactly how we are with our relationship with God. He turns our sorrow into joy because one day we have that great promise, that promise of Pentecost, that promise of Shavuot, that we will be one with God and we will be in delight, we'll be in jubilee, we'll be in eternity with him. We just have to cleave unto the Lord Jesus Christ, call upon his name, hallelujah. So shall we be saved, Yahshua, Yah is our salvation. Jesus Christ is the Lord and the anchor and the hope of our souls. Ruth, hallelujah, was a virtuous woman. That is what she was called. And that is who she was known as. In verse one of chapter one in the book of Ruth, it says, now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. So there was a famine and he had to leave Bethlehem to go to Moab, to the strange land. And this is where Ruth comes into the story. Well, it's an interesting story because there was a lot of pain and suffering to get into the good parts. But I wanted to bring out some important meanings of the names of some of these stars in the story. So you have Ruth. Her name means friend. You have Eli Malek, which was Naomi's husband. His name means my God is king. And Naomi means my delight or pleasantness. Beautiful meanings right there. You've also got their sons were called Ephrathites of Bethlehem. And it says that they were Ephrathites. And Ephraim, Ephrathites, that name means fruitfulness. And what are we to be? We are to be fruitful trees like the scriptures we've been meditating on, especially with the theme of this festival of Shavuot and Pentecost that we just finished celebrating and that I'm still in celebrating, even though it's over, I'm pretending like it's not over, amen. It says in Ezekiel 36 and 27, and I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. And 1 John in 3, 20, Four says those that keep the commandments of God shall dwell in him and he in them. And by this, we know that he dwells in us by the spirit he has given to us. And what are the fruits of the spirit that we've been meditating upon? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So let it be, yeah, let us be these beautiful fruitful trees bearing this awesome fruit of you, God, proclaiming that you are God, our King. You are our delight. You are our friend. And we are happy to be called your friend and to be called your delight. And Ruth's child, whom she bore, her son's name was Obed, Serve or serving is the meaning of his name. And we are delighted to serve you, Lord beautiful story of the book of Ruth. I don't have enough time to read it all to you guys, but I wanted to do a little bit 
um, of gleaning, um, which is a, a theme of this book, is gleaning, and um, wanted to glean off of the beautiful words and off of the story and the righteousness of Ruth, amen, that God has blessed us with through this beautiful woman and this beautiful story of how beauty can really come out of dark turmoil and in what looks to be like a really bad situation, God can turn around. Amen. Amen. We've just got to grab on to hope. And like Ruth did, we've got to follow close to, cling to, join to, and stay with God. Amen. And that's in Ruth chapter one and verse 14. This is when Naomi was attempting to send her away with her other daughter-in-law, Orpah, because Naomi's two sons both died along with her husband. And Naomi had made the decision now she's going back to Bethlehem because her whole family just died. And now she's going back in bitterness to her home country. But in verse 14 of chapter one, God sent a remedy for Naomi's bitterness through Ruth. It says in um, Ruth 1 and 14, it says, but Ruth cleaved unto her. Hallelujah. And that reminds me of the scripture in Proverbs 3 and 17. Proverbs 3 and 17. And this scripture is talking about the word of God. It's talking about the Torah, Jesus Christ, the word. This is um, the theme of Proverbs 3 and 17. And the scripture says... Bear with me one moment while I flip there in Proverbs 3 and 17. It says, her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. And you think of pleasantness, that's Naomi's name. Um, And then if you read in verse 18, it says, she is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her and happy is everyone that retains her. So let it be, we grab a hold of this beautiful tree of life the word of God, and we will truly dwell in endless pathways of pleasantness and peace, hallelujah, and happiness in God, because the promise is a future blessing of eternal happiness, eternal ecstasy, eternal joy, eternal shalom with God, hallelujah, and we look forward to it. So let us follow close to him, let us cling to him, let us join to him and stay with him all of our days as Ruth did. That's the faith that we want to have like Ruth that we want to have with the Lord. Amen. And you've got to turn and leave the old behind and you've got to walk in your new life with Christ. Amen. That's what Ruth did. She left her old life behind and she grabbed a hold of pleasantness. Amen, which is a representation of Jesus Christ, of Yeshua, of God. She came back with Naomi in the beginning of barley harvest. Um, In Ruth chapter 2 and verse 2, she said, this is beautiful, and I just have to flip back to Ruth. Bear with me one moment here. Going back to Ruth. Such a small book of the Bible, but mighty in power. It's small, but it sure is strong. Amen. Amen. Ruth chapter two and verse two says, and Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. Hallelujah. And that word grace we've been talking about lately, that word grace is 2580, the Hebrew hen, which means favor, grace, charm, and to stoop in kindness to an inferior. And what is that beautiful picture? What a beautiful picture that is with us in the Lord. Hallelujah. God, we pray, hallelujah, and bend our knees and our heart towards you to glean in your field and find grace in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Hallelujah, the redeeming kinsman. That's who Boaz was. Amen and amen. Um, A couple other scriptures I wanted to bring out are verse 12 of chapter 2. And this is Boaz's answer unto Naomi. Yahweh recompense your work. The Lord recompense your work in a 
full reward be given you of the Lord Yahweh, the God of Israel, under whose wings you are come to trust. That's beautiful. It reminds me of this past Sabbath teaching. A lot of this I'm connecting with that. And it's just beautiful to know this is what Boaz did. The, the redeeming, the redeemer, the redeeming kinsman, representation of Yeshua, of Jesus Christ, of the Lord. A full reward he gave her. He said, of the Lord God, of Yahweh, the God of Israel, under whose wings you are come to trust. And that's when Ruth made her decision to follow and grab a hold of God. She said, where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. She made that decision and grabbed a hold of the Lord Yahweh, the God of Israel, and came under his wings and trusted in him with all of her heart. And she did not lean into her own understanding, but she trusted God with all of her heart. Hallelujah. And he made a beautiful use out of her and out of her life. In chapter three, I wanted to read in verse 10, and this is Boaz. His answer to Ruth and his speech towards Ruth is, Blessed are you of Yahweh, my daughter, for you have showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as you followed not young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to you all that you require uh, for all the city of my people does know that you are a virtuous woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let that be. We have these beautiful qualities like Ruth, like the Bible says, God make you like Ruth and like Esther and like Mary, like Rachel and like Leah. So let us have the best qualities of her in Yeshua's name. Amen. And when you go on to read in chapter four, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Chapter three, going back to verse five, Ruth's reply to Naomi was, all that you say unto me, I will do. There's her I do. That's our yes and amen, our I do with God. Um, and she, hallelujah, was well known as a virtuous woman. And so may we be well known as a virtuous being for God. Amen and amen. If you flip to chapter 4, verses 11 through 12, this is a blessing upon Ruth. And it says, and all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. The Lord Yahweh make the woman that has come unto your house like Rachel and like Leah, which too did build the house of Israel and do you worthily in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem and let your house be like the house of Pharaoh's whom Tamar bore unto Judah of the seed which Yahweh shall give you of this young woman. And that's the blessing that was placed upon Ruth and Boaz um, when they got married and came together. And we were just talking about that Tamar and Judah uh, on Shabbat. This is so connecting and it's beautiful story, beautiful celebration of the festival of Pentecost and our relationship renewed with God in this new beginning. Amen. It says in verse 13, so Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, Yahweh, the Lord gave her conception and she bare a son. And the women said unto Naomi, blessed be the Lord, which has not left you this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto you a restorer of your life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law, Ruth, which loves you, which is better to you than seven sons, has borne him. And then we know that Obed, the son of Ruth and Boaz, was part of the lineage of Yeshua and of King David. Because you've got Ruth and Boaz 
being King David's great grandparents. As you read in Ruth chapter 4 and verse 22, it says, And Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David. And we know that lineage brings Yeshua. And that's just a beautiful ending of this book of Ruth, showing that God can turn sorrow into joy. He can turn darkness into light. And our stories, no matter where we find ourselves in our Ruth walk, whether it's in the midst of bitterness, whether it's in the midst of joy, wherever it is, we have to know that God ultimately will make it for good. God ultimately will turn it around for greatness and for goodness because he, we have a promise. This is our, our festival. This is a festival, the festival of Shavuot. It's a festival of promise. And although it's over, it's a week over, but I'm still celebrating in it just because it's so beautiful. I'm still gleaning, gleaning in Shavuot. We have this promise that we are going to be united as one in pleasantness, in, in, in friendship, in delight, in strength with God. Hallelujah. And we can't forget what Boaz's name means. Boaz's name means strength, hallelujah, and swiftness. And that's a representation of God. We, he is our strength and we are his strength. We, he delights in us and we delight in him. And it's this strong, beautiful, intimate friendship of serving him and he serves us. Amen and amen. We don't deserve it, God. But we thank you for allowing us to glean in your field and for having grace having grace upon us. We have found grace in your sight. May we forever, may we forever in a day find grace in the sight of you, Lord God, Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. May we glean in your field and find that beautiful grace that Ruth found gleaning in, in the field of Boaz. May we glean in your strength and may we come underneath the shadow of your wings for therein is our strength. And may we rise rise on the wings like eagles hallelujah and fly with you and just soar with you our king our redeemer hallelujah thank you for the story of redemption the story of faithfulness the story of turning darkness into light that we can glean goodness from your word lord god and we know that you have beautiful promises and beautiful we have a beautiful use for our lives. So may you get the glory out of us. May we bring you glory and bring you kindness, joy, peace, patience, goodness, love, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. May we be like the beautiful fruit of Ruth, Lord God. And just the beautiful qualities that your son has given us through Yeshua the Messiah. May we, Lord God, just grab a hold of you, cleave unto you, join ourselves to you, stay with you, and just grab a hold and never let go, Lord God. For you hold our hand, you walk with us, just like Ruth grabbed a hold of Naomi and walked with her and became a beautiful friend unto her. So may, hallelujah, we be to your people and may we be unto you for you. We know that you are that way unto us, Lord God. And we thank you again in Yeshua's name. And we bless you, O oh God, our great Redeemer and our strength. Thank you, Lord God of heaven and earth. Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Et Adonai. Go forth and be virtuous. Go forth and be Ruth. Amen and amen. Shalom Aleichem and have a beautiful rest of your week in Yah.